Welcome once more to our coverage of the Tour de France and I think you'll agree with me this morning it is a very pleasant place to be here on the shores of Lac Le Mans. I'm quite certain too a lot of the riders in the Tour would like to stay here. You know 198 riders set out from Futuroscope just over a week ago and 184 still survive. But by the end of this day some will have retired and some will have cause for real celebration. The favourites must now come out and live up to the tag that we've given them. Let's have a look first at the overall situation of the favourites as we see them and see their positions they hold this morning. By the end of the day, we'll try and show you what's happened to their progress or otherwise. Steve Bauer now faces his most difficult day and he's been in the yellow jersey since a week yesterday. In second place, Ronan Pensek, 17 seconds back. Fourth, Claudio Chiapucci, the winner of the King of the Mountains in the Tour of Italy. Fifth, Raul Alcala, he's proved already he's a real favourite now. Sixth, the defending champion, Greg LeMond. In eighth place, Sean Kelly, riding as consistent as ever. Eleventh is Eric Brokink. Thirteenth, Miguel Ingeran, the lieutenant of Pedro Delgado. Fifteenth, Gianni Bugno, the winner of the Tour of Italy. Sixteenth, Stephen Rooks, a former king of the mountains in this race. Eighteenth, Delgado, the man who won the race two years ago. Twenty-fourth, an outsider for France, Charlie Motte, who lives near the Alps. 28th is Stephen Roach, and he doesn't seem to be riding so well this year. 67th, Fabio Parra, a real challenger in the mountains. And 90th, Robert Miller of Scotland. Robert, by the way, told Paul Sherwin after the time trial at Epinal he would like to win in the Alps this year. He scored already three times in the Pyrenees, but he's never won a stage in the Alps. He's got two chances, one today and one tomorrow when the race finishes at Alpe d'Huez. Let's have a look at today's route. Here it is. The Col de la Colombia is a climb of 18 kilometres and a steepest gradient of 1 in 10 or 10 percent. Once over the top of that, we go down towards the Col des Aravis. Over the top of that, it's a straight run down to Le Betex, which really is the foothills of Mont Blanc itself. It's an 8 kilometre climb to the finishing line. It's the first of four mountain top finishes in this Tour de France. It'll be a very hot day for the riders, and it's a fairly long way as well, 118 kilometres. And the field rolling out of Switzerland after their one-day visit to the country, back now towards the French borders, which are only five kilometres outside of Geneva, and into the mountains. And on the first big climb, at the 11 miles climb of the Col de la Colombia, it is the Frenchman Tilly Claverola who goes over the top first and picks up enough points to take over the lead in the King of the Mountains jersey. Conti goes over, 35 seconds behind him. Patrick Robit, 52 seconds back in third place. And Claudio Chiapucci is fourth, 1 minute 23 seconds back. And alongside him is Scotland's Robert Miller. So Miller goes over in fifth place. Steve Bauer and the yellow jersey group of some 40 riders is over 2 minutes and 10 seconds behind. And we're not far from the summit now of the Col des Aravis. And this has been a great day out, in fact, for T. Clever Rolla. We're watching here, rider 195 is Roberto Conti. And you can see now what a lovely day it is. Here's exactly where we are on the climb. 79 kilometers into the race today. So just about 40 kilometers remaining. And the main field, this is the group containing Raul Alcala. You can see him to the right of our picture in that white jersey. Claudie Coquillion, the champion of Belgium, to our left. And this is Johan Brunil in the pink lotto colours. And Stephen Roche is also in that group. Let's go back up to the leader now. This is Thierry Claverola. He's had a great day out today, having gone over the top of the Col de la Colombia in first place. He's now crossing the top of the Col des Aravis. And there's no doubt that today, when he comes down to the finish, or in this case today, up to the finish at Le Betex, he will be the new leader in the King of the Mountains. A pleasant surprise, Sir Paul, because last year, of course, he had to retire with that broken hand when he was leading in the King of the Mountains. I think he'd like to get some revenge on that, because I'm quite sure that Claverola would have won the King of the Mountains competition last year. He really was going well on the climbs. But uh, he's going to be at the top of that classification by the end tonight, I would think, as long as he can keep up there when we come at the, the final climb. Well, this is Brunil leading with Claudio Coquillion. And no sign at the front of this bunch of Steve Bauer. But as far as we know, he is in this group. And this group riding at around three minutes behind Claverola. 
And there is Steve Bauer down there. He's had a bit of a shock already today, though, because he lost ground on the Col de la Colombia. Over two minutes behind. And so at one stage, Ronan Pensek had taken that leader's yellow jersey. But Bauer has fought back up to the leaders. Here is Conti of the Ariostia team. One stage win to their credit already this uh, year with Moreno Argentine. So he climbs the hill here in second position. Patrick Robit was with them, but he's been dropped. And the, the peloton, who's got a good tempo going now up here. They've got a very good tempo, as we can see back at the front here. Conti is going over the, over the top, and he'll begin the descent. Try and pull back that little gap on, uh, on Claverola, but it's difficult. Claverola, although he's a climber, is quite a good descender as well. So I think he's going to be away for some time today. Well, the race heading on down towards Mejev now. You just saw Conti there release his toe straps, ready for the long, very fast descent. Good descent, this one today. And the race heading now towards Le Betex, which lies in the shadow of Mont Blanc. Nobody of any great note has been dropped by this peloton today, or at least they fought back. Uh, one rider who is behind, though, is Jean-Francois Bernard, who seems to be in all sorts of trouble in this Tour de France now. He lost a lot of time yesterday. He's losing more time today. The only retirement we've heard of so far is Eddie Schurer, the lieutenant of Stephen Roach. So the Onstate team have a go. Eduardo shows us again the rider who rode so well into Switzerland is now trying to liven things up on his way back into France. So this is the field which contains Raoul Alcala, Greg Lamont, Steve Bauer, Robert Miller, who was active on the Col de Colombia, is in this group as well. As they go over the top. So Shozas was in fact uh, taking on Chiapucci under the banner there. And Claudio Chiapucci continuing to ride well. And Dmitry Konosheyev also up here. So he hasn't done too badly on this smaller climb. He was nowhere on the climb of the Col de la Colombia. See how that acceleration just split the field up a little bit over the top there, Phil. You've got uh, Charlie Motte and Johan Brunel coming across to this little group that's forming uh, on the descent. The, pe the peloton will have let them go because they knew they were just sprinting for the King of the Mountains point, and they'll probably come back in one of these corners here. So, Tilly Claverola leads the race off the top of the Col des Aravis. The favourites are all together in the big bunch. And uh, Pensek is still going to have to work out how he can get those 17 seconds back today over Steve Bauer. Join us after the break. And welcome back to the Tour de France, the first full day in the Alps. We can now rejoin the action on the final climb of the day, Le Betex. Out in front, Thierry Claverola. The rider behind him, Conti, has been picked up by a chasing group. So this, remember, is the second group on the road behind the lone leader. And they're looking a little bit unsettled now. And if they do mess about, they're going to find that chase group is going to come on them. They're approaching what I think will be the four-kilometre banner now. So they're still quite a long way, long way behind Teddy Claverola, who seems to be riding to what will be his first victory in the Tour de France. And he's ridden a few, and he'll have wiped away the bad memories of a year ago. There's the yellow jersey of Steve Bauer. All of a sudden, Steve Bauer now looks a very clumsy rider. Well, Steve looks as if he's suffering a great deal now. You can see the way he's rocking his shoulder, and he's unable to hold the wheels of the wheels of the riders who are going past him. There's accelerations going away at the front. I believe that Delgado and Bunio are starting to attack at the front. In fact, you can see that Bauer has been dropped from this group. There is a split, a definite split in the group. So Bauer it looks as if he's losing his yellow jersey today. And it's Ronan Pensek who is the man who will profit if Bauer does lose it because Pensek has gone a clear in this forward group. So Steve Bauer in trouble in the mountains and now you can see why that he needed that big buffer of 10 minutes uh, from the flat stages and he can afford to lose a little bit of time but he was unlucky that Pensek was in that break a week last Monday because Pensek is a good climber. And look at this, Raul Alcala. He seems to be cruising up the slopes of this climb, and alongside him, Pedro Delgado himself. And this is Bruno Cornier, who is coming from the lead group, which Motte was in, to the main field behind, which contains 
Ronan Pensek and Raoul Alcala. So they're picking up one rider from the advanced group. And Cornier now looks to be in all sorts of trouble. Well, Cornier's done his job. He was there in the front group as a policeman for the Z team. And now he's just got to try and get to the top of the climb as best he can. Thierry Claverola now less than three kilometres from the summit. Can he hold on? It's not very far to go, but three kilometres in the mountain can take you an awful long time, especially when you've been away almost since the start of the race as Thierry Claverola has today. So we're into the region of San Gervais, where the tour hasn't finished before on the Betex climb. Uwe Ampler here and Charlie Motte. Bauer has lost a lot of ground, Paul, from a lot of people. Well, I would think Bauer is between 15 and 30 seconds behind, and the group is really going away quite strongly. It's going to be very difficult, in, difficult for him to pull this gap back before he gets to the set to the top. But you never know, a rider can get his second breath, get back into the race, get a rhythm going as he gets near the top, and he might be able to pull himself back. But I don't think that the way Bauer was going there, that he's going to do that today. Charlie Motte also regaining time there with Ampler. This is Claude Coquillon, champion of Belgium on the front of the drive group. Marino Lajaretta to the right of our picture there. Stephen Rooks, the blonde-haired rider in the centre with the red jersey from Panasonic on. All the top names seem to be here except the overall leader of the Tour de France now. Gone to is Franz Marsen. Well, there's a fair selection of talent in that group as we look here at Steve Bauer struggling in a group that's been dropped behind. He's rolling around a lot, trying to get going. All he's thinking about is losing as little time as possible. But I think the yellow jersey is slipping off his shoulders today. He's being escorted there by one of uh, Ronan Pentec's teammates, Jérôme Simon, who's just making sure he keeps there, I guess. Well, this is a very warm day today. The crowd has turned out in the thousands and thousands on the mountains. They feel the Tour de France begins today. And they've been speaking just about every language too. Two kilometres to go for Charlie Motte. Uh, two kilometres to go for Thierry Claverola. And Charlie Motte is still setting the tempo at the front with Uwe Ampler sat comfortably in his wheel. It's a difficult position for Charlie Motte to be in to go for the overall classification in the Tour de France or to chase his teammate. Here, this group is going to be the first selection of the Tour de France. There is Brooking, Ronan Ponsek, who's probably going to be the new yellow jersey in the Tour de France tonight. And on his far shoulder, Eric Brooking of the PDM team. Now, I wonder if they're going to tell us the seconds that uh, Ronan is gaining. What a way to celebrate your birthday. And there it says he is virtually the yellow jersey of the Tour de France. And this is going to be a marvellous night for France tonight and for Ronan Pensek. It's his birthday today. He's 27 years of age and it's all working out at this moment oh so well for him. And so too for another Frenchman, Thierry Claverola, because I don't think anybody's going to pull him back now. The crowds are thickening. He will sense he's not too far away from the finish. He'll be coming up to the kite short. This is the deviation. We go straight on now, but most of the vehicles will be turned right. And so he knows now about a kilometre and a half to go to the summit of Le Betex. And he has a very nice rhythm going. He is a good climber, Paul. But is he going to be able to lead this tour to the front or make more progress to possibly pick up the yellow jersey in the tour? Well, uh, I'm not sure about taking the yellow jersey in the tour. Claverola's lost a lot of time up to now, but he'll want to be one of the lieutenants to Charlie Motte, who is again going through here on Uwe Ampler. Back in the main field is chasing. There in the centre is Pedro Delgado, looking quite comfortable. I thought he would have attacked by now, but he's uh, obviously quite happy with the pace that's been set by Lecaretta, Claude Croquillon, who's just off the front of the screen. And there is the new yellow jersey of the Tour de France if Steve Bauer doesn't manage to get back into the race, Ronan Ponsek. So there he is, Ronan Pensek and Pedro Delgado. Miguel Indurain is also here, the back of this group. Robert Miller temporarily seems to have dropped from our sight of that group. He set such a good pace to split the field, and that worked. And, of course, he's racing now for Pensek to get the yellow jersey. So the great piece of tempo riding by Robert Miller has caused the split that may well have destroyed Steve Bauer today. Just inside, two kilometres to go now for Ampler and Charlie Motte. 50 seconds, well, we've watched uh, just a few seconds nibble away for almost a week, and in the last two kilometres, Pensek has claimed 50 seconds. So that will make him the Mayo Jean by 33 seconds tonight, but the way that he's riding, he's going to gain even more time. There is Steve Bauer being forced now to lead the chase from the split main field. Delgado and the Spanish people on our right recognising him straight away. 
into the approaches. Final kilometre to go for Tiddy Claverola. The man of the race today, without a shadow of a doubt, 82 kilometres in the lead when he crosses the line. It'll be his first ever stage win in the Tour de France. And Delgado is now applying the pressure for the man who's following him. In fact, there in second position from the Z team is Ronan Pontek, as well as Marino Lecaretta. And they've caught the group that was away just before there, Laurent Biondi. They'll go straight past these riders. But it just goes to show that Pontek, it was very dangerous to let him go on the first day and give him 10 minutes lead because Delgado's attacked, but Pontek is managing to stay with him. In third place is Marino Lejareta, the Spanish rider from the Onze team. Well, tremendous riding by Delgado. We've seen him make these late moves so often in the Tour de France to steal a few seconds and then the next day launch a long attack to try and claim a few minutes. He's doing it again today, and he is moving away of some of the other favourites in the Tour, like Greg LeMond, and he's also doing it, but he's got in his shadow there, Pensek, and that man now is so inspired, he is never going to lose it, because he's racing to the yellow jersey of the Tour de France. These riders now are the riders from the group that was in between just before. There are 119 is uh, Winterberg, he's just been caught, and Delgado really flying up to the top of the climb here. But I mean to say, if you look at Pontek a few years ago, he finished sixth overall in the Tour de France as a skinny little kid. And now he looks like he's going to be a skinny little kid, but right at the top of the leaderboard. Absolutely. He had a great start to his first Tour de France. He finished sixth. And now he's living up to everybody's expectations. When Greg LeMond came onto his team this year, he won a race straight away. And he said just the very presence of Greg and our team has inspired the whole team to succeed. Well, he's going to succeed tonight. And so too is this man. Thierry Clavarola, he must feel so, so good now. He looks once over his shoulder. He needn't worry. 100 metres to go to the end of the first mountain stage of the Tour de France. Thierry Clavarola has been the king of the mountains today. That's the jersey he'll pull on later this tonight because he's won every one of the climbs and now victory is sweet for the Frenchman Thierry Clavarola who crosses the line as winner of this stage of the Tour de France at Le Betex. And he'll soon be the leader in the mountain when the protocol begins. Well, let's go back down the mountain as the clock ticks away the time gap on the left to his teammate Charlie Motte wearing the magical number 51, the number worn by Eddie Merckx, Luis Ocaña, Tevenet, Bernardino when they've ridden on to win the Tour de France. And they always get the numbers by accident. Everybody wonders who will wear 51. Look at this. Look at this. Ponsic has actually been dropped by Delgado. But, I mean, it's a fantastic ride that, Delga uh, that Ponsek has put in up to now. And in the front there, you can see Delgado and Lejareta have left him behind. But it doesn't matter. As far as, po as Ponsek is concerned tonight, he's going to take the yellow jersey. So, as we swing up towards the finish then, Ponsek has hung onto the back wheel of Delgado and held it as long as possible. But Delgado has cracked him. It just shows you what a great mountain climber Pedro Delgado really is. He's taken with him Lejareta. But uh, Ponsek now is going to ride to that yellow jersey for sure because if he's in trouble, believe me, Steve Bauer is in a lot worse. The new yellow jersey in the Tour de France. He's very, very close to the finish. He knows when he sees all these vehicles that travel with the Tour every day that the installation has been set up again. It's waiting to welcome him tonight into his yellow jersey. And no finer day to choose when it is your birthday. He's over the top now, he quickly recovers it. Let's go back up to the finishing sprint. This is Ua Ampler who's trying for second place. A great ride by him today. Motte will try and come off his wheel and make it a one-two for the RMO squad. He's gonna hang on to his slipstream as long as possible and have a go. The clock almost two minutes as since Clavarola comes in and now Charlie Motte makes it one-two. Four, it's gonna go to the photo, but it looks to me like Motte may just have got it. One minute, 53 seconds was the gap from those two riders. Charlie Motte and Ampler. And not too far back is the fourth rider on the road. And this will be, well, it's Guido Winterberg. No, it's Montoya, I think, who's come over in fourth place. Just over two minutes after the arrival of Clavarola. And here is the remnants of that Lee group that chased home. And just look at this now, it's a big bunch that's come in here. Delgado is safely in, just in that small group ahead. So he's finished well today, he's gained time on Greg Lamont as well. Seabauer, final effort, but he knows now he won't be going on to the finishing podium tonight. 
He's led the Tour de France since a week last Monday. And now, for the time being at least, he's losing the yellow jersey. We must not forget that Bauer has lost the yellow jersey before and won it back when he finished fourth in the race two years ago. And so at the end, a 1 minute 54 second victory for Thierry Claverola, and what a great breakaway it was. Uwe Ampler spoiling a 1-2 for the RMO team, pushing Charlie Motti into third place, and Montoya taking fourth, La Jaleta fifth, and to do that he had to drop Pedro Delgado, who by the way finished in seventh place. Well, as always, Paul Sherwin joins the battle scenes at the end of every stage of the Tour de France, and this time he was first to Steve Bauer. Steve, today you've lost a battle in the Tour, but have you lost a war? Oh, it's a long race, you know, like I said before, I raced day by day, and uh, I was a little bit, uh, you know, worried about the, the shortness of the stage because it's very fast, and uh, I think a, a longer stage suits me better because, you know, this, the, the tempo is a little bit steadier, but... Uh, you know, I've, you know, I'm not too disappointed, really. Well, today there were surprisingly few retirements on the first day in the Alps, but Gerard Rouet was one of them. But what a strange retirement it turned out to be. When the broom wagon caught him up, he was sitting in his Castorama Rally team car. He was persuaded to ride on, which he did for another five miles. And then it all proved too much, and he finally abandoned the Tour de France. So the Castorama Rally team have lost their two top men, Fignon first, and now Gerard Rouet. No doubt about the yellow jersey, though, on his birthday, the new race leader of the Tour de France is Ronan Pentec. What a day to choose. The real champion of France tonight. New leader in the King of the Mountains as well. And, of course, it has to be Thierry Claverola, who went over the tops of all of the coals in first place today. He's pushed off Dmitry Konosheyev. And things are looking a little bit shaky for Olaf Ludwig in the green jersey competition. The last two days, he's finished almost 15 minutes behind the winner of the day's stage. He hasn't scored a single point. He's going to struggle as this race goes on through the Alps. Let's have a look what the first day in the mountains has done to the overall leadership. Bauer is out of the yellow jersey for the first time in 10 days. On top of the leaderboard, the birthday boy, Ronan Ponsek, who celebrates his 27th birthday today. He'll remember this for the rest of his life. In second place, Claudio Chiapucci. Bauer is down to third. Watch out now for Raul Alcala. Although he's still down the list a little ways, the time gap is closing all of the time to the leader. There are many riders who've made good gains here, as you can see. Others have lost them. This has been a great opening.